Hi, this is Thomas Elba. I'm um, here to introduce um, some of the architectural principles behind Habitat. Um, but first of all, um, just a brief introduction of Habitat. Habitat is a solution framework um, aimed at um, optimizing productivity and streamlining some of the development processes uh, around producing um, especially demos and presentation um, solutions. So very rapidly um, spinning up a solution, um, developing and extending um, and extending that solution to fit the needs. Um, <clears throat> so in short, uh, Habitat is open to everybody. It's available to everybody. It is uh, based purely on standard Sitecore and publicly accessible software. Um, so no um, additional um, purchases need needed. And Habitat is purely focused on the architectural um, and methodology um, principles. So it's there's no scenarios, there's no um, content, no um, design focused. It's purely architecture and technology. So what is the architectural focus of Habitat? Well, it can be summarized in the th these three bullets. It's about keeping it really simple and consistent so that it's very easy to, um, to open a solution, to discover what's in there, um, which leads to flexibility so that you can change and add features uh, without worrying about breaking stuff, without having to investigate um, thoroughly, and and of course extending the the the, uh, the solution so that um, you can add new features um, without having to understand all the other features in there or um, or knowing how to plug in. So. A few of the principles in, I guess, marketing software and website and website building, like one of the, the first things or most important things about uh, websites and marketing software is, is probably is some of the most volatile um, software on the market. It, it really is changing all the time. Every time you build a website, you want to extend it, you want to change it. Um, it's, it's really... Um, it's really, if you don't focus a website solution on change, then you, you're in for a lot of problems. Now, the, the other part of that is the cost of change on all software, no matter how complex, no matter how simple, always changes over or always increases over time. The foundations on which the software is, um, is built changes the um, the knowledge about the software changes. If you extend and add features, then the complexity of the solution um, grows. So software um, will always cost more to change over time. So how do we make sure the productivity stays high when we know that we're gonna change a website? We also know that the website in the long run is gonna cost more and more to change. So that's some of the, the challenges that we're facing. Well, building one cycle solution is really easy. I mean, it's, 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 uh, if you do a cycle training course, then actually building a, a cycle solution and building the first kind of features on a cycle solution is not that difficult. Um, you can get started really fast. And we all, if you've ever built proof of concepts or, um, or sort of um, introduct, introductory solutions, then, um, then you know that, that getting started is, is quite simple. It's the coupling, it's the, when that solution grows and the coupling between all the different parts of Sacor, then you end up in a lot of cases, um, and from my experience, it's the, the, uh, the challenges of, of maintaining that solution um, becomes harder and harder with more and more features coupled together. So the coupling of all the features and all the, 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 um, the parts of Sitecore makes it really hard in the long run. I guess this is, this is not just limited to Sitecore or, I mean, the productivity um, always goes down if you see high coupling. So um, if, if you've got a, 
a very feature rich um, a very feature rich application where the coupling is where very high where the dependencies between one feature um, is is uh, is very very high then adding more and more features so adding number of modules will always lead to more effort being spent on coupling all the modules together as opposed to actually extending with features so the coupling of a project is extremely important um, because it, that is one of the biggest killers of productivity. If you get the coupling or the the um, the, archi the overall architecture of the solution wrong, then the productivity goes down. So one of the, the very um, basic things is a simplified coupling model where you have a very discoverable, very um, straightforward architecture that's very discoverable. And you, and you hopefully... Um, have such consistency in the architecture that you won't have these architectural smells like circular dependencies or um, or dependencies across boundaries so that the um, because these things tend to sneak in especially in the periods where you have um, a high crunch so you need to produce a lot there's a deadline over your head then at that point that's where the architecture starts falling apart and you start introducing these smells but if you if you really achieve that, then the effort spent on coupling um, versus the effort spent on actually building and extending the features can be optimized quite a lot. Um, so get the architecture right and be consistent about the architecture is one of the, the most fundamental um, principles of productivity. And there's derived effects like if you simplify uh, coupling, if you if you make your dependencies extremely um, open and very uh, visible, at that point you make um, modularization possible. So you can take out and modularize parts of your of your software and make it even more independent and um, get things like reusability and and um, testability a lot more. Um, into your solution which of course leads us to the habitat architecture so first of all the the habitat architecture consists of three different layers so in the bottom there's a framework layer um, which has sort of the foundations of the um, of the solutions so these are the um, <clears throat> these are the frameworks and the, the software pieces and the the modules that um, that is used by a lot of the features uh, on top. Um, and on, 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 on top of that is the actual sort of solution specific features. This is the, um, the business logic, the, the presentation elements on the pages, the, um, the actual features on the website or the, the, uh, the, so in the solution. And then the, finally, the last part, the, the top one is the project layer, which is the, the layer that ties all the features together. So this is where you see the page types, the visual appearance of the website coming together. Um, and all of these, uh, in all these layers, we have modules. So this is where the modular architecture comes in. So in the uh, project layer, there's two modules. There's a website module, which is uh, where we tie together the site core parts of, of page types, uh, page layouts, um, layout definitions, those kind of things. And then of course the design um, project, which ties together the visual design, the CSS, those kind of things. Um, in the domain layer, we have all the features. So uh, basic content such as page content, we have navigation, search products and so on. So all the, the features of the, um, of the, um, the features of the solution. And in the bottom, the framework such as indexing and search, uh, taxonomy, asset management, extensions on Sitecore, things like that. So common frameworks that, that, um, that's used by um, some of the domain projects. And in terms of coupling, then the, the dependencies goes from um, the, the top to bottom. So the most stable um, components in the bottom, the indexing, the, the asset management that hardly ever changes, um, those are dependent, uh, or sorry, 
the dependencies goes towards that so that um, the visual design which very often changes very um, you have a high need for changing themes and, and adapting creating new page types that use the different features in a different um, in a different way um, and then the features they depend on the features and the features depend on the framework a lot of these principles are are, um, are not a sort of um, um, it's not rocket science and it's not um, it's not something um, developed recently they're they're part of of very standard software craftsmanship and, and object um, oriented design so um, i would really recommend you to read these two books um, and and um, which describes a lot of these patterns and and, and practices so let's have a look at the the actual solution First of all, let me show you the um, let me show you uh, the uh, the website. So this is um, this is an example website built on top of Habitat, <coughs> which has a very simple um, content and um, with a carousel. It has some um, some some elements on the pages. Had has, has a footer. Um, some social sharing so on it it has um, navigational structures so that we can navigate to different pages with content uh, we can uh, look at um, some of the um, modules here and look at light media light boxes and so on so this is all built in Sitecore. this is all 100% um, editable in the content editor and so on um, but if we dive into uh, the solution, this is where, again, with the simplicity in mind, the, the layered architecture, the modular architecture is immediately visible uh, inside the, um, the, uh, the, the Visual Studio uh, solution. So here we have uh, three, three layers. We have the project layer, we have the domain layer, we have the framework layer. If we go inside the project layer, we have uh, the design, and outside here, just for, for ease of use, we have the website project, which is um, another part of the project um, layer. <clears throat> In the domain, we have these um, different modules, projects, identity, language, media, metadata, navigation, news, search, social, standard content. And under framework, we have the assets, indexing, serialization, site core extensions and taxonomy so really just a, a, a very discoverable very simple architecture um, makes it extremely easy to detect where um, the features are um, it, it directly sh the, the the construction the, the structure of the project and the solution um, very closely mimics the architecture uh, likewise, inside Sitecore, now Sitecore is a very type-centric uh, system, as we all know. So templates need to be residing under templates, under layout, renderings need to be under renderings, um, and so on. So of course, we can't have the same sort of consistency um, as in the project. But what we can have is under templates, have a Habitat project that has the same three um, the same three folders so in the project we have the website here under domain we've got the identity um, media so on so on uh, and likewise under renderings under habitat we have the same structure so again consistency simplicity makes it really easy to make uh, to match uh, what's in the different uh, modules right so so what's in the box? As I mentioned, right now in, in Habitat, we've got a website and a, oh, that's the wrong one. There's a design project, not a domain project. Uh, but we got uh, in the domain layer, we've got um, identity, language. Uh, so identity is the, um, is the, uh, <clears throat> the visual, the logo, the, 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 con the contact information in the bottom, the, um, the little, uh, 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 the little copyright text down here um, language is the uh, the language selector 
up here. Uh, media is uh, media light boxes like this or the um, the carousel on the front page. Metadata is page metadata, so in the HTML um, metadata. Navigation is top menu, um, link menus like this one. Uh, we've got uh, secondary menus over here. Um, then we've got news, which is the news section. So under news down here, we've got latest news. We can go in and read um, the news here. And we've got search. So we've got a search box up here and a search results page. Um, social, social links up here. Um, latest tweets. Um, <clears throat> so um, Facebook metadata. Um, and standard content is things like the uh, the title, the page titles, the is that this one, the um, the page image, the uh, page content, those kind of things. So asset management in the framework we've got um, asset management, so handling JavaScript, uh, loading JavaScript and CSS. Uh, and having JavaScript, um, so f functionality related JavaScript in the, for example, in the light boxes in the media loaded on the pages, those kind of things. Indexing goes across the, the so the Lucene search indexing for multiple. So having um, a search need in news and a search obviously in the search module, those both things are leveraging the, the indexing um, features in the in that framework part. Serialization is related to the serialization of items, so version controlling items of Sitecore. Um, uh, Sitecore extensions are extension methods on Sitecore, so um, extensions of the um, of the item object, of the site object, those kind of things. Um, helper functions uh, built on top of Sitecore, um, and finally taxonomy, which is the taxonomy, uh, the tagging, um, a tagging uh, engine. Uh, on top of Sitecore. And then the last thing is just what are we what kind of um, what kind of software do we have underneath? Again, all standard, nothing um, commercial. We have um, Sitecore 8. Well, it's part of commercial commercial, I suppose, but Sitecore, Sitecore 8. Um, we've got everything is ASP.NET uh, MVC. Um, we're using dynamic placeholders. So the ability to create placeholders or add uh, multiple rows on the pages. Um, so that's that's a, a, a module um, that's pulled in um, uh, via NuGet. Uh, so a dynamic placeholders, a NuGet package. We've got a unicorn uh, underneath for item serialization. Um, Bootstrap is as you can see on the on the visual design everything is standard bootstrap right now um we've got jquery and then we're using sas for the css uh, compilation um, right so where can i get it well it's as i mentioned it's it's completely publicly available uh, on github so download it there there's an, an installation um, manual there um, shows you how to get started, um, set up a Sitecore um, standard solution, and then do a build and a publish, and then um, get it. So we're using uh, Visual Studio 2015 and Sitecore 8. So those are the sort of the two frameworks you'll need to install beforehand. Okay.